I thought it would be fun because the home and away opponents are out for the Seattle Seahawks to predict a way too early assumption of what could the Seahawks look like next year record-wise. Now, these are fun because there's no real answer to it, right? There's no way you can tell me I'm absolutely wrong or I'm absolutely right. You can also just form your own opinion in the comments. Obviously do it. Give me your opinion. Do you think I'm crazy? Do you think we're way off or we're near the same of what I believe? But we never have an idea if any of us are going to be right. We have a brand new head coach and Mike McDonald. We have a whole new staff. We don't know what's going to happen in the draft. Uh, for all we know, we're not even 110% sure that Geno Smith's a quarterback. I do believe he's going to be. They gave him the injury guarantee. There's obviously another roster bonus that comes up uh, in March, which they could trade him before. They could be choosing to draft a quarterback. We have no idea. I'm not claiming anything, and I'm not claiming what they should do in this video. That's not what this video is about. I'm just saying there's a lot we don't know. We don't know if they're going to be drafting a quarterback, an edge rusher, a linebacker, a center, a guard. That's why these like super duper early predictions are all just based off in your head. How good do you think they're going to be? And then say, I think they'll be kind of this good and go with it from there, I guess. So I'm just going to look at the home and away. That's all we know for now. Who we're playing at home, who we're playing in away, And let's just give some humble guesses of where I believe the Seahawks will stand at the end of the 2024 season. Now, I'll preface it all with saying, do I believe they're going to be good? I actually think they'll be just as good as they've been the last few years, somewhere in the 9, 10, or 11 win range. Now, that's all going to depend on a few things. Are we playing are we are we making some trades and some draft picks to contend this year or are we shaking things up new quarterback like i mentioned uh or you know trading away some bigger names or not resigning bobby wagner and leonard williams and different pieces like that and jordan brooks now i'm gonna use this based off my assumption that geno smith's the quarterback we might draft a young guy to back him up at the beginning whatever it may be i think we're gonna resign leonard williams i think we're gonna bring back Bobby Wagner and Jordan Brooks, at least Bobby, maybe on a one year deal. And Jordan Brooks is going to get something that he deserves. With all that said, that's how I'm going to assess this team. Now, nine wins is probably the floor. 10, 11 wins is all going to be based on how's the new coach, right? I think a lot of us, as much as we love Pete Carroll, knows we know there was some old mentality stuff there, maybe some some things we didn't like about how the team was run, management-wise, discipline-wise, play-calling-wise, old, old uh, schemes and different things. So it's really hard to assume how good of a coach Mike McDonald would be, but I'm going to play this all like I said. I think these guys are back. I think we're decent. And I think he's going to be a good coach because if you know me and seen any of my videos, I like the hire. So let's do this. The very, 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 very early Seahawks prediction. And if you want to support the brand, make sure you go to seattleontap.com, seattleontap.com. Put your name in the email box. It'll give you information for our newsletter. It's free. You got to get on it. We're going to be doing articles, our podcasts about the Seahawks, Mariners, Huskies, all, all things Seattle sports. You're going to be part of giveaways. We're going to be opening a Discord channel um, for Seattle sports talk that are going to be doing giveaways and a lot of free stuff, jerseys, hats, tickets, all these things. So you got to get on there. And last but not least, SeattleOnTap.com. Get on the email list. It is literally free. You might win free stuff, tickets, hats, jerseys, shirts, merchandise. And check out the, the uh, description in the bio. We have our Mariners only page, Mariners on tap. We have a Huskies only page now. We're going to be doing more in the Seattle sports world. So get to those. You can also find me at Sammy on tap for my NFL page. It's half Seahawks, half other NFL and you can find my NBA page below as well. I'll be talking basketball, hopefully mostly Sonics once they come back. So if you want to support, those two things are very important. Let's start with the home. The Green Bay Packers at home, 
I think we were just as good as the Green Bay Packers, which is obvious because the last two years, the Lions win got us into the playoffs over the Packers. And then this year, the Cow, the the Packers beating the Bears got the Packers into the playoffs with the same record as us. But that, I'm going to say, is like it is, if that was on the road, I'm saying Packers win. If that's at home, I'm saying the Seahawks win. So let's give ourselves one win right there. The Rams. The Rams. As much as I love Pete Carroll, it's not even hate, but we know Sean McVay has kind of had his number. More than kind of. So give us a win at home. Give us a win at home against the Los Angeles Rams. Finally. Young coach. The only thing that could beat Sean McVay, a young genius offensive mind, is a young genius defensive mind. Give us the win. For real. We have the Vikings. The Vikings, the Vikings, the Vikings. This is an interesting one. We're at two wins at home already. I'm trying to be realistic. It's all going to depend. Is Kirk Cousins the quarterback? Is he not? That makes a big difference. I think with Kurt, they were rolling this year. He's good. I don't know how it's going to work out. I don't know if he has to miss some times because of the Achilles. So with all of it said, I'm going to humbly give us the win because I don't know what they're doing at quarterback. And I don't know if Kirk's going to be healthy. I don't know if we're playing them week one or week 10. Nobody knows that yet. So I'll go with the win. That's three wins to come off. I'll give you the Giants a win as well. New York Giants. That's four wins. Because realistically, we are better than the Giants. I don't even have to debate that. We killed them in New York last year. I'll give us a loss to the Dolphins. Now, it depends what time of the year. First eight weeks of the year. Every year of Tua, Mike McDaniel. Mike McDaniel. We have Mike McDonald for us. Mike McDaniel for them. Uh, They've been really good the first half of the year, and then they've slowly gotten worse in the second half of the year. But I'm going to give them the win because they are a very good football team. They're a playoff team. That's fair. I'm going to give the San Francisco 49ers probably both wins just to be realistic. They were the second best team in the NFL this year. I would love to beat them. If you know anything about me, there's two teams I hate in all of sports. It is the San Francisco 49ers and the Houston Astros in baseball. That's it. I don't hate really any NBA team. I don't hate any other NFL teams. I don't hate any other baseball teams. Some people hate the Rams. I don't hate the Rams that much. I don't hate the Cardinals that much. I don't hate in baseball like the Texas Rangers or the or whoever, the, the Blue Jays or the Yankees. I hate the San Francisco 49ers with a passion. I was so happy to see them lose the Super Bowl, and I hate the Houston Astros. But I'm going to give them both wins probably against us this year because I'm just being realistic that right now, as of today, they're a better football team than us. I'll give us a win against the Broncos. That'd be win number five. One, two, three, four, five. With two losses. Um, I think it's simple. Russell Wilson's not going to be the quarterback. I don't think they're going to have a good quarterback next year, and I think they're somewhat reaching a rebuild with Sean Payton. The Arizona Cardinals. That's a weird one because right now I'm sitting at five and two. I've got to be realistic here. I think we'll beat the Cardinals in Arizona because we always do. But the Cardinals are always tricky. With Kyler healthy, I'm just going to go ahead and give us a loss. Five and three. Because he is one guy that could be extremely tricky for even a defensive mind like our coach. So let's just say we're five and three. With the Cardinals. I, I always do this with division people. And, you know, if you're subscribing to our channel for me to just be overly, I'm more positive than most people are. But I'm not, I'm not going to sit here and tell you we're going 17 to 0 every year. So I'm just trying to be realistic and have a fun prediction. And I'll give us a win against Buffalo because I think they're going to regress a little bit. I think they've keep almost missing their window. And I think the Seahawks will have to have one upset win. I think that would be the upset win at home. Next year, they're not a division rival. They don't come to Seattle often. It's a long travel for them. So let's give us a win, which means it'd be a win against Green Bay, the Rams, the Vikings, the Giants, the Broncos, and the Bills. So I have us at six and three with three losses to the Cardinals, the 49ers, and the Dolphins. So we're at six and three after the home schedule. <laughs> 
nine games. Yeah, should be eight on the road then. So we're at six and three. Now, let's do what's next. The road. At San Francisco, like I told you, I'm going to give it a loss. I don't want to explain it anymore. They're better than us as of right now. I wish more than anything in the world that we don't lose to the 49ers on the road or at home. But I'm just going to give it to them. I'll also give the Rams a win on the road because they beat us. or We beat them at home. I'll give them one. We'll split. I'm going to give you splits with the whole division just to keep this as realistic as possible too. It's probably not going to end up being all splits, but... It's just a very realistic way to look at it. But then I'll give you a win against the Cardinals because we always win in Arizona, it feels like. We always have somebody that gets hurt, but we always win. It's like a Seattle reunion for every Arizonan that lives there now or likes to travel there in the middle of December or January when the weather's very good in Arizona. People do it. It's very common. I go every single year. Every single year, it is 80% Seahawks fans at State Farm Stadium. So... Will give us a win there, even though we they beat us with an upset win by them at home. Let's say so that puts us at seven and five, with five games remaining. The Patriots, the Bears, the Lions, the Jets, and the Falcons, and we're at seven and five. Here we go. I will say a win against the Patriots on the road. It could be a tough one because it's. Just in New England, it could be weather factors. But they were dog shit last year. And they might be dog shit again this year. They don't even I don't know who's gonna be their quarterback. I know they, they might either they're either gonna have to draft a rookie and we'll be playing against a rookie quarterback, or it's gonna be another year of Mac Jones or Bailey's Happy. New head coach. It's not Bill Belichick anymore. The word Patriots is does not stand the way it stands as it once did. So I'll give us a nice win in New England which puts us at eight and five Detroit, the lions. We beat them two years in a row in Ford field. They're really fucking good. They should have been in the super bowl. I'll give us a realistic loss there to put us at eight and six. I don't have to explain that one too much. I do think we can, obviously it's a dome. We can go into Detroit and win for a third year in a row, but I'm going to give them the benefit of the doubt. We were out of the playoffs. They were a final four team. They were up by 20 at half against the 49ers. They should have been in the Super Bowl if they didn't have one of the biggest choke jobs, I would say, in the history of the NFL. So I'll give them a win. They deserve one at home against the Seahawks, which puts us at eight and five. Eight and six, sorry, with three games to go. I'm going to give us I'll give us a win against the Bears in Chicago, which puts us at nine and six. And the reason I'll give us a win there is because one, if it's Justin Fields, I still think we can beat Justin Fields, especially with a smart defensive head coach now, a, sm- a young, smart one. Number two, if it's Caleb Williams, rookie, I still think we'll win. And the Bears always find a way to have dysfunction. I've seen some stuff online. The Bears, some people consider Jay Cutler. Some people will consider Justin Fields, if he lasts another three or four years, the best quarterback in Bears history. They're not good at making talent good. They've always been a disaster. I hope it doesn't stay that way because they're a good brand for football. But I'll give us a win because, like I said, they find a way to fuck up all the time. Okay, and for our 10th win, I think we're going to be at 10 and 17. I'll give us a win against the New York Jets. I don't know what Aaron Rodgers is going to be. I don't think Robert Salah is that good of a coach. I think we always play good in MetLife. I don't think we've lost in MetLife in years on end. We won our Super Bowl there. And the Jets are like the Chicago Bears, who were like the Detroit Lions, the team before that, but the Lions have finally broken the curse of being a mess. They're always a mess, the Jets. They're a laughing stock, especially as of late in the last 20 years. <laughs> They've had a couple good seasons here and there of Mark Sanchez and Rex Ryan. They, you know, they haven't been good for a long, long time. So a win against them, which puts us at 10 wins, six losses. And I'll give us a loss in Atlanta. And I'll tell you why. If Atlanta, if Atlanta has a quarterback, if they can find a way to get somebody like even a Russell Wilson, 
trade for someone like a Justin Fields. Have somebody that's somewhat compatible as a quarterback. They have Drake London and Bijan Robinson and Kyle Pitts in a stacked roster in general. So if they find a way to have a quarterback, which I think they will because there's no way you fire your head coach and you look at the situation and say, yeah, I mean, well, he had a fair shot with Sp- uh, who was it? I was going to say Spencer Rattler, freaking whoever their quarterbacks were this year with Tyler Heineke. And uh, I always call him Spencer Rattler, the dude from UCF, their, their quarterback. Um, Riddler. Thank you. It's Riddler. Whatever. I, I, that's why I always think Riddler. I'm going to, I, I got I got to get it right for you guys. That's how bad they were. I couldn't even get his name. Ritter. Desmond Ritter. Thank you. And Tyler Heineke. Uh, if they get a quarterback, they're going to be good. So I'll give us a loss there and put us at 10-7 and seven on the season. One win more than we had the last two years. This would be with a first-time head coach. And we're just going to start getting our feet wet. Just like we did when, when Russell Wilson came, when Pete Carroll was here. We started getting our feet wet. Made the playoffs at 10-6 and six at the time, I believe it was. It, was nine, it might have been 9-7 and seven back then when we made the playoffs the first year of Russell Wilson. We were really good. Lost in the second round to the Falcons, I believe it was. And then the next year was the Super Bowl. So let's see. This year, I think 10 and 7 is realistic. I think it'd be a very successful season. And we'll be really happy with what we get from Mike McDonald. And uh, we'll go from there. Like I said at the beginning of the video, comment what you think. Comment what you think. On top of commenting what you think. Make sure you go to Seattle on tap. Put your name in the email box right there in the front. That'd be part of everything we're doing here at Seattle on tap. And we have Mariners on tap, Husky on tap, all that stuff on on YouTube. Link in the description. I love y'all. I'm Sammy on tap, and we'll talk next time.